Okay, chapter five, these are general problems. We're going to take everything from the entire chapter and put it all together. And it's not a minor issue. And the thing you have to remember is your toolbox. So let's take a look at that toolbox. This toolbox is the thing that we learned from the entire chapter. And everything has to do with converting from moles. Okay, so the first thing we learned was if we had moles and we wanted to get to ions or atoms or molecules or formula units, we would use Avogadro's number to do the conversion. And then we said if we wanted to get between moles and grams or grams and moles, we'd use the molar mass off the periodic table. Then we talked about volume of a solid in cubic centimeters. There was no direct way to get to moles but we use the density in grams per cubic centimeters off the conversion sheet to get to the mass in grams and then use the molar mass to get to moles. How will we get to moles from a volume of a gas at STP as opposed to volume of a solid in cubic centimeters? Well, STP means that conversion. Using the conversion sheet Okay, that's how you get between moles and the volume of a gas whenever it's at standard conditions. And then finally, we dealt with volume of a solution, and that's molarity, and each molarity will be different from each problem, but you have to remember moles per liter. Moles, volume of a solution. So we've got three different kinds of volumes, and your job is to be able to tell the difference for each of these. This all has to be in your head. So let's see how this I've got four of them ready for you to try. Okay, here are the first three. What volume will 175 grams of sodium occupy? The second is what volume will 175 grams of helium at standard conditions occupy? There's this third question. And if you can do these, you will be ready because this is just about any kind of possibility for any kind of problem. So hit pause, give them a try, come on back and we'll go for it. Okay, you're back. Great. So when we have one number, life is good. Your job, as always, is to make sure that you can identify the kind of problem this is. We've got one number, 175 grams. We want to get between volume and mass. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Well, what's sodium? Well, sodium is a solid. So how do we deal with volumes of solids? That's cubic centimeters. That's conversion sheet. That's density. That's your job. You need to be able to identify the kind of problem and the kind of conversion factor that you need. Looking at densities for sodium, there it is. Sodium is 0.97 grams per cubic centimeter. So, one cubic centimeter per every 0.97 grams grams cancel. We're left with cubic centimeters. This is not a hard problem if you know where to go. But if you don't know where to go, then you're going to be guessing. And we don't like guessing in chemistry. We like knowing. And of course, a lot of that is doing lots of homework so that you're familiar. So the calculator says 180.412375 we have to write this answer to two sig figs, right? Because this has two. So, how would we write that? 1.8 times 10 to the 2, positive, because it's a big number, cubic centimeters. All right, we're done with that one. Now, do you see how similar these two problems are in terms of their wording? What volume will this amount of this stuff occupy? What volume will this amount of this stuff occupy? You can see where those two can be confusing. How do you unconfuse yourself here? 
by recognizing what standard conditions means. Standard conditions, and that's helium, and helium is always a gas, right? At least at normal temperatures, at standard conditions for sure. So we've got one number here. All right. Well, what are we trying to do? We're trying to, with standard conditions, we want to use 22.41400 liters is equal to one mole, right? That's what standard condition tells you. So what do you have to get to first? Grams to moles, then moles to volume. Fantastic. How do you get from grams to moles? See how we're putting these problems together? Grams to moles, that's off the periodic table. Grams per every one mole. Periodic table. For helium, there's a reason why you're going to have this conversion sheet including the periodic table for every test. It's really, really useful. There's the molar mass for helium, 4.003. So, 4.003 grams is in one mole. Grams cancel, we're left with moles. Now we're going to use 22.414 liters per every one mole. Moles cancel, we're left with liters. How many sig figs will be my answer? This has three, right? This has four, and this has five. So the answer will have three. So punching that into your calculator, 175 divided by 4.003 times 22.414 equals 980 liters. And we're done. Okay, so it's clear and whenever you're doing this kind of problem, or this kind of problem, part of your job is going to be identifying the kind of problem it is, because that will tell you where and which conversion factors to use. Okay, last question. A solution is made by mixing 46 grams of Ki into 321 milliliters of solution. They want to know how many liters of this solution are needed to provide this many moles of Ki. Okay, well, I hope you can see that 46 grams divided by 321 milliliters is a concentration here. You've made this solution. For every 321 milliliters, you can get 46 grams. Alright? So, they want you to end up with volume. Can you see that if you use this conversion in this way, with the volume in the denominator, that you can never get the answer with the volume in the numerator? It will never work. You're going to have to flip that around. The way I like doing this problem, look at that, one, two, three numbers. So where do you start here? Well, I like sort of working backwards. If this is what you want to be in your beaker, let's start with this and go back to figure out how much you have to pour out. So if we start with 4.4 times 10 to the minus third moles, we can use this concentration unit in terms of grams per milliliter, or we could convert this into moles per liter, because that could be helpful as well. I'm going to leave it as is. I want to convert to grams because that will get me from this material to this conversion factor to understand the volume. After all, if 4.4 times 10 to the minus third moles is the same as 46 grams, then that's how much volume we need. All right, let's get to grams. How do we get to grams here? Moles to grams. Moles to grams. Periodic table, molar mass. Moles will be on the bottom. Grams will be on the top. This is off the periodic table, the molar mass, and this is of Ki. So we have to look up what K and I are. K 
is 39.10 and Iden is 126.90. We add those together. Oh, I'll do it on my calculator. Too easy for me to make a mistake. I get 166.00 grams per one mole. Great. Okay, that's the number of grams that we need to get. Well, can you see that 46 grams is contained in 321 milliliters? We've used that as our conversion factor. We haven't even simplified it. And we flipped it over. Use it the most convenient way possible. That's why this, this chapter is called Convenient Chemical Units. Okay? Milliliters, but they want to know liters. So you should remember at this point, 1,000 milliliters per every one liter. We've done that a lot of times recently. So milliliters cancel. All the units cancel except for volume in liters, which is what we want. This is two sig figs, right? This is four. This is two and three. And this is infinite, so the answer should have two sig figs. Let's see how many that is. 4.4 4 times 10 to the minus 3 times 166 times 321 divided by 46 divided by 1,000. I get 0 0.0051 liters. That's two sig figs. That's the units in liters. And that's my final answer. So, your job is to each step along the way, find something else to cancel to give you the units that you want. More practice, more practice, uh, more, more, more practice, the better off you're going to be. Randomly up the problems from here and see how you do. Good luck.